Oh man, here we go back with another one. Yes, sir. We are back. We're back with a special guest. And as we always say, he's the most recent, so he is the, the most, most special. special. <laughs> we got a filmmaker. We have a, a, a music savant. <laughs> we we have the main guy behind one of the main guys, Dave Miranda, of the show Just Give Me Five. We got Jimmy Nelson in the building. Yeah, Ooh, man. Thank Welcome you guys. in. What's up, man? Thank you. How we doing? <laughs> good, man. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We, we here. Yeah, thank we you. here. Yeah, thank you for coming to, to uh, SoCal. Absolutely. Arizona. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Newport Beach is about 20, 20 minutes away. Don't even worry about it. Um, now, how was the drive? It wasn't. It wasn't bad. I'm in Central Phoenix, so the freeways here get you th- places quick. So that's okay. a good thing. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you guys, you guys were filming some stuff today. Yeah, actually, yeah. Today we're filming with uh, Cash Lansky. Um, we just oh, filmed. Shout out to Cash Lansky. Yeah, we just filmed it at my my house. We've been kind of doing that lately because it's so damn hot out. So. Right. Yeah. Nice. We've got some things to look forward to. That we do, man. Yeah. That's a great show. We'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah we're gonna get into yeah. it. We'll get into it a little bit later. So Yeah. Let's get it started, man. Let's uh mm-hmm. let's talk about, you know, kind of what wh- what is it that you do now? Okay. So what I do now is video and photo, probably mostly video. Mm-hmm. Um, for a living, I sh- I film weddings and I do like real estate photography. So okay. people selling their home and stuff. Okay. Those are my main two things and I do other things with video and photo outside of that for money as well, but those are my main two things and then um of course Just Give Me 5 is 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 the other main thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. And and, and it is it is the main thing. It, yeah. it may not be lying in the pockets the way the other things are, but it's the main thing. Yeah. Um let let's go back though because mm-hmm. I know um we we had obviously we had Miranda on the show. Yeah. Um and he spoke about you you guys have known each other for a very long time. Yeah. And actually met was it through was it through music? Basically yeah. this is how you guys kind of got got started or Yeah. Yeah, okay. we met through music. I was like 18 or 19. Um, just making beats. Okay. Um, I started out with TSOI um, when I first kind of like got into the scene. Okay. Definitely always a background dude though. Um, but yeah, I was making beats and I recorded for him. I had a little studio set up in my room just like this, uh, soundproofing and a mic and all that. Mm-hmm. And then um, so I was I was recording him for his first album. I didn't produce that one. I just recorded. Um, and then after that, I made all the beats for two albums with them. Okay. One of them was a deal he got with Japan. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So yeah, did all the beats, recorded all of it, mixed all of it. Um, so that's how we did music together. Fire. Yeah. So I go to Flagship Barber. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, Clint. <laughs> Clint and twenty. Yeah, J right? twenty. Yeah, yep. Jake. Oh, shout out to this one. So I, I say I got my hair cut last week, and I said, "Man, we're getting Jimmy Nelson on." <laughs> and he said, "Say what? Jimmy <laughs> Nelson's coming on? Wow, I've never seen him. You yeah. know, he's always the behind the scenes dude for sure." So he was like 20, 20 cuts my hair. Yeah, and uh, so he was like, "Dude, he was like, he's so he, you." So my question basically is, yeah. how many people have you like done beats for? and stuff has it been a, like a lot of people have you sold a lot of people beats um a fair amount but i feel like the main people i worked with was miss miranda and then from tsoi it was nonsense okay um i feel like those were the main two and then like because i was mostly busy with making beats from probably 2000 five to 2011 ish okay um that's when i was most active with it and in that time frame i did sell some beats online to like someone from australia or something or right, right, right. all over the right, place right. um but yeah I, it's kind of it's kind of hard selling beats like there's there's so many producers out there and like and it's just it it all just changes and People want beats for super cheap and stuff too. So. Right. Well, <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. So, so it was more about just the passion of it, just making something, something that I really like doing, and and doing it with other, you know, artists like Mr. Miranda and stuff like that, who who just love music, you know. Mm. Are do you still make beats 
today? Like I do, but I like I never officially quit and I never officially start. I, I take breaks, um, not really intentionally, but it's like life is just just gets busy, you know. Like, yeah, for sure. Especially for me in the last almost two years now, like since I quit the nine to five life and started working for myself. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I shouldn't, I, you know, <laughs> Clint wanted me to ask you a question, dude. And I can't ask not, it, bro. No, I can't remember what it was. It was about <laughs> some dude, like Abroy or Ab. What, what the heck was his name? Text him right now. I don't have Clint's text uh, <laughs> number, dude. <laughs> but he was in there. He's like, make sure you ask this question, man. I totally spaced it, man. I remembered, but then I forgot what it was. Yeah. Te- text 20 and tell 20 <laughs> to ask Clint. We got to yeah. get this question. Yeah, I'm the curious. Question. <laughs> Text uh, it right now. I'll, text, I'll, I'll text. edit it out. You won't even see you text it, bro. <laughs> they won't even know. I'll just be me and Jimmy will be uh, talking, bro. You yeah. sit here in the background. <laughs> They won't even know. Uh, shoot, man. But yeah, they, they, Clint had a lot of nice things to say about you, man. That's cool. That's for sure. You know, That's and awesome. definitely what you, you know, music wise, and then obviously what you're doing now and stuff. Yeah. That's but dope. so it so music's kind of turned to a hobby for you then. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. I think I think at some point there'll definitely be a way where music and video lines up for me. Not necessarily music videos, but I don't know. I definitely want to create some type of like short film and if i was able to do the music side of it too like in a certain score way as well yeah. yeah that'd be far but that's that you know beats are kind of limiting to that like who knows one day i might end up playing jazz music or something and right. <laughs> yeah you never know man music can lead down so many different paths for sure and stuff like that too yeah well and it's, it's funny that you say that right because you know you might just end up doing jazz music well you just ended up filming Mm-hmm. From the story that Miranda gave us, yeah. it's like one day you're like, "All right, picking up a camera. Yeah, this is what we're gonna do." You know what it was? Because I I got away from music for a while, and then I started getting back into making beats in like 2018. Okay, and I um I had an iPhone, and I learned like you can get different lenses and stuff like that. So I was messing around with that, but I started just filming myself making beats. Um, I did a couple YouTube videos. And that was when I was in the nine to five life, but that's when something hit me that I didn't want to do that anymore, like the nine to five thing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to find something that could make me money that I just love doing. And I was thinking it could have been beats. So, you know, I started looking back into like selling beats and stuff like that. But really what happened was the, the video part of it took over. Okay. And um, I remember in that time frame when I was kind of get back into beats, I hadn't talked to like Dave and I weren't really hanging out. We we just kind of talked here and there, and we met up and he came through and we did like a little video of a song we did, you know, nine, eight nine years prior to that. Okay. And um, that that, that kind of sparked something too. Like that that was me kind of just getting into video, even though it just filmed with the cell phone. Um, and then um, but that was his time frame too, where he was kind of done with music, so to right. speak. And he was looking for something mm-hmm. too, so it was like there was something brewing there the whole time. Right, right, <laughs> right. and then right. The, the collision happened. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But oh, I was just gonna say, man. Uh, you know, as far as music goes, what are you, what do you listen to uh, primarily these days? Uh, I've always been well, since I was like 15, 16, 17. Around the time I got into hip hop, I got into jazz, like older jazz records, because hip hop comes from older music. Very well, much right, so. right. You know, it's the sample from that. So when I first got into like Tribe Called Quest or M- Mad Lib and stuff like that, right. mm. I just, you know, I figured out they were sampling to make that. And, um, and my dad, he's been a radio DJ. For, um, God, since the since the 60s oh, like wow. the mid 60s and he was really into jazz music back then the 60s and 70s and to me that was like the best period for music um so and with hip-hop you know why, why, why do you why do you say my bad i don't mean to interrupt no, why, yeah. why, why, why do you say you think that's the best period for music well i should say jazz music for jazz okay um and maybe not this a lot of the 70s stuff got bad so like if i were to pick my favorite time frame it'd be like the mid 60s through the early 70s okay. for jazz and i feel like that's when it just got the most creative okay before it kind of like fizzled, fizzled out and turned into smooth jazz okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Got yeah, too, yeah yeah got too we mainstream got yeah. You know. jazz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. That's um, and my dad, that, that was 95.5 KYOT. My dad worked for them for that. Oh, yeah, really? That time for, oh, yeah. that's He crazy. wasn't that guy that did that, but he was on, he's on the radio. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fire. yeah. He wasn't the smooth jazz guy. No, no. <laughs> but he was on that channel. So, yeah. Yeah. Smooth. <laughs> it's funny though because I love jazz yeah. and I kind of agree with you in the yeah. sense of smooth jazz yeah, yeah yeah there's something really lost it's um, it's just like music today that's uh, like overproduced yeah, yeah. it's like that in for a sure sense. It's, for sure because when you think of jazz you think of you want to hear the breathiness of yeah. the saxophone and, yeah. the, and all the you know you want to yeah. hear all that yeah. you know yeah. what's going on where Smooth jazz just takes all of that away. Yeah, it you know, does. and it's just super clean. Yeah, super I ain't clean. really hating on it. It's just not really my exactly. My cup That's of how I feel as far too. As jazz goes. Hey, sounds like you you probably will be doing jazz later. <laughs> <on here. laughs> Do you play any instruments right now? Um, so I got into playing guitar when I was making beats, oh. guitar and keys and stuff. So I knew the basics of like chords and um, scales and stuff like that. It helped me because I was making beats only from sampling records, and then the, the next level was figuring out what key they're playing in and learning right. how to add stuff on top. So that's what I did um, back then. But yeah, I haven't really been into playing instruments, you know, since then. It's like I'm more into it if I'm making beats, of course. But yeah, I played bass, like electric bass, mm-hmm. electric guitar, acoustic guitar. A little, I mean, if you can play keys, you can make any sound of it because computers, you have digital, you know, uh, what's it called? Virtual instruments and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't play anything right now, but I I filmed a, a jazz band, um, what was that, just a couple months ago, um, the Garrison Jones tr- Trio, I think mm-hmm, it was. Mm-hmm. It I was, think yeah. Yeah, he, that, really talented, but like that was, that was amazing because they play like, it sounds like the stuff from from back in the day like it's the real stuff and that was really cool to film but anyways yeah i i just i i love that type of music and i just i feel like naturally if i got into piano more like i could really eventually kind of get into that okay you know? that's all, that was gonna be my yeah. question like what what if you had to pick an instrument what would yeah what would probably piano or like like a fender Rhodes electric keyboard type thing okay you know? yeah i feel like piano is like the gateway it is you know, piano and bass the way they line up yeah <laughs> <laughs> the gateway. well it is kind of the gateway to i mean you learn piano i mean you can pretty much learn anything for sure you know because it's it's just one of those instruments that yeah. transcends like uh, almost every genre of music mm-hmm. you know and just uh, you could pick up a guitar and kind of figure out the notes from there yeah yeah for sure all that stuff you know i sure. played i played saxophone years ago nice I got, I got, it's been 20, <laughs> no, over 20 years since then. Oh, I yeah. could probably do it. Yeah, I was just going to say, could, could you think you could do uh, I think I could, bro. Some, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we'll make the, uh, the 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 Dre and Jimmy band, the you know collab. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we just need a drummer. I'm the drummer. Uh, you're the drummer. I'm the drummer. There you go. There you go. I'm the yeah. drummer. We'll, I got we'll it. We'll get it done. I got yeah. set. Uh, then, we got set then we got Miranda yeah. on the lyrics, bro. We're yeah. Good. There you go. He'll be the, the host and the and the MC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody got. <laughs> I like where this this is going yeah, already, man. Major things right now. So getting back um to the filming. Yeah. So. Getting into it, you guys, you know, shoot this this video to a song you guys had did a, a while back. Mm-hmm. Um, then the, the the fire gets sparked. Okay, yeah. now what's going through your head? Like now, it's like what what are the moves that are you put or that you put into place to kind of keep going? Um, so because you're still working at this time, yeah, right? yeah, okay. still working 2018. And then end of 2018, basically, instead of using my iPhone, I bought a camera. Um, what was the first camera you got? It was a Panasonic G7. Okay. So that was my first introduction to like mirrorless cameras with interchangeable lenses, learning. So I learned that like that camera body was pretty good, for, especially for the price, like 300 ish. Mm-hmm. And then you can buy lenses that cost more than the camera, but they hold their value for sure because gotcha. the lenses are so, they just, there's such a big part of the equation right um but yeah that that was my beginning with that's the camera i got um my sister is a real estate agent so i learned about like what real estate photography is i was like okay 
every agent that sells a house needs photos. So there's a need for real estate photos. And basically my sister, and she also sells like pretty nice places. Like, okay. Um, so I just, she even, she had someone else doing photos for her. I just would ask her to, if I can just show up and, sh and shoot photos for my own portfolio. So that's really how that started. Like I just built a small portfolio, a couple houses. I put myself out there like on like Thumbtack. I started a website um, and eventually, and you know, referrals and stuff like that. So that was real estate photography, like my beginnings with that. And then um, weddings kind of came right after that. Um, my first few, I did them for free. Same thing, do it for free, build a portfolio, mm -hmm. and then just put yourself out there and just keep going. So like with weddings, I started free, then 500, then 1,000, then 1,500, 2,000, and now I'm starting at like 2,500, which, I mean, the market is all over the place, but in Arizona, that's like a decent place to be, especially after, you know, two years of doing it. Right. Um, uh, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> like, like for me, it is, yeah. yeah. But there, it's uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, industry, that industry out there, like there's so many that, I, like I'm in all these groups on Facebook, but there's videographers that make like 10,000. Oh, yeah. Where there's yeah. like, how many bridezillas have you ran across? Luckily, really That's none. A good question. Like they've all been nice to me. Even ones I see, like ooh, like the way they talk to other people, they've all been like nice to me. Like really? I haven't had any bad issues, and I'm I'm somewhere in the thirty weddings range, probably oh, around oh, thirty five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as, as, oh, like the good, like the thing like the now. Next one you get well, is good. I know. Right? Terrible. Well, you must be pretty good at it because if you weren't, then yeah. you would have something coming out at you yeah you know i feel like like with where i'm at like people i just make sure that they're going with me because they see my stuff and they like it because if they if they just they're just looking for somebody and they don't really look at your work and they have this thing in mind they want that's that's a recipe for disaster right i do yeah. things my way like i don't want to do, try and be someone else with it so like most of the uh brides that come to me like they they look at my stuff they like it they know like my range or whatever mm -hmm. and like it just goes good from there like I'm, i mean what it's like weddings are so run and gun like filming them um because you have one side where you just gotta capture it no matter what whatever's happening and then you have the other side where you got to be creative with it and shoot it in an interesting way mm. and then there's the editing which is a which, which is takes a long time especially it depends what kind of wedding video you're doing because the old ones are just a long ass video of the like everything like three hours of the whole day and then there's the main thing that I create which is a highlight film which is like a short film that's like five or six minutes long um, and it's like it's composed of like three second clips or you know three to ten seconds like mm -hmm. it's and, and it it's it tells a story like right. so versus okay, here's your ceremony, here's the speeches, here's the dances. It's it's not, it's, it's there's a lot to, you know, create gotcha. basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever showed up to a wedding and and been overwhelmed just For by sure. the the scenery? Like you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, how in the hell am I going to capture all this? <laughs> um, kind of, like for me, like it's, I don't know. It, it's such an, like, it's such an, uh, um, I'm trying, I can't find the word, but it's like, a huge responsibility basically because right. it's their wedding day I'm never really intimidated like I get excited when I see like really cool looking stuff like I'm just like oh I'll get a shot of it this way a shot of it this way like I just go into a creative mode okay I think uh, like I just I the only thing I worry about is the timeline and being able to be ready for everything that's gonna happen because because yeah. when I'm doing weddings I'm not just filming I also have to handle audio so like for like I have to hook up to the DJ's board. I put lav mics on the uh, groom and the officiant okay. in the ceremony. Oh, okay. I got to capture the speeches with like um, uh, a little task cam thing. So I got to get clean audio too. And then during the reception, it's usually dim. So I got to set up my lights too. I got to like have that ready to go. Mm -hmm. So like the amount of gear I bring to a wedding is crazy. Like I'll have three cameras, you know, four lenses, lights with light stands, three tripods, a gimbal. Jeez. All the light, all the audio equipment, like three lav mics, uh, like a Tascam four track thing. Yeah, you're doing this all by yeah, yourself. Yeah, just gonna ask you. Yeah, this by yourself. so <laughs> primarily by myself, and and everyone, if you, when you're getting into wedding videography, they always recommend having a second shooter. But I started out learning how to do it myself, um, 
and and I just started sometimes including a second shooter to kind of help me out with stuff like that um because it's definitely beneficial but but the, the downside is that's more footage to go through like I got to go through right. his stuff I was just gonna ask too do you have yeah. like multi multi cameras like a multi cam yeah. shoot yeah like, so do you set up like two and then one is maybe just roving around exactly like for for ceremony time that's how I do it two okay. two on tripods one roaming around but I also put the roaming around one down every once in a while when when I don't need to be moving around yeah. stuff but but yeah that's so that's the other part because when you edit you gotta sync all that up in the oh, editor yeah. with the audio and all that stuff too mm -hmm. so yeah Fire is like, <laughs> the uh, ins and outs of like it's so funny too because i didn't when i got a camera i did not think oh i want to shoot weddings like that wasn't a thing i just knew you could make money doing it how did uh, so how did it come about like somebody hits you up about it um so literally at the time i just put it out there something like hey guys i'm trying to build a portfolio so if you know anyone that has a wedding coming up um, just have them hit me up. So that's really how it started. Wow. So someone, a friend of a friend, and then also my neighbor was like, yeah, we're getting married in two weeks. I'm like, oh. And I was like, you got someone to film it? And he's like, actually, we're gonna just set up this camera like on a tripod, we're gonna try and do that. But so basically that was that was the first one I had I had ever filmed. That's dope. Yeah, do that's you see yourself doing it for a long period of time? Probably like, maybe a good five years or so, you know, I feel like I'd be comfortable with that. And I feel like what, I, the, what I'd like to get into next is just like, is films or like right, movie yeah. production or something it, along so those lines. So it's a means, lines. it's a stepping stone basically. Of, I think so, but it's like it, not a stepping stone in the sense that like, I don't like it or it's not like right, something right. I want to do. Like I, I, I really do enjoy it. And like, I enjoy the process of it. And then especially like once I send it to them, I always get, like usually I get like really positive response and stuff like that. And that means a lot because that's something they're going to see forever. Forever. Right. Forever. forever. Yeah. Well, at least until they get divorced. Exactly. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Um, one day I'm going to... Then it goes in the trash. <laughs> yeah. One day I'm going to check in on uh, them and they're gonna be like, yeah, we're, we're not together. Yeah. 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 But yeah. thank you for your hard work. Yeah, yeah, appreciate you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, how would, would you recommend somebody who wants to get started to start on a phone? Like just to um, know like a process, not like to I do weddings so. or anything, but yeah. just to shoot? I think so because ultimately lighting and composition is the most important thing for a good looking image. So like you can use an iPhone if your lighting is on point, the way you're shooting, you're thinking about like your focal length and stuff. Although some of those things you don't have control of with the phone, but um, yeah, I mean, I, that's how I started. But at the same time, like you can get a really good camera body for pretty cheap and then start building up your lenses. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the, a better investment if you think you're gonna be doing it long term, you know, if that's the goal. I, 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 know, I know just like when we did that shoot with Matt, yeah. he talked about, he would actually, like we walked around and he was asking other people like, oh, you using the not the camera? Like, oh, you got the such and such. Yeah, you're right. Lens you on there, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I use that for. I yeah. like that one. Like, oh, you got the such as is that the such and such lens? Yeah. Like, so that I mean, like you said, that's a huge part. Is it is 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 just that little attachment, you know, or sometimes yeah. large attachment mm -hmm. changes the game for sure. You know what I mean? What what about what about it for? Because I don't know. Yeah. Um, what about it changes the the shots so, so much? there's factors like for each lens so um some lens are zoom lenses and you can be pretty wide and they can zoom into like a medium type shot um some lenses are fixed so you can't zoom in and they're one focal length but they do that focal length really well um and then there's the aperture which i won't try to get too technical but it's no, go ahead. but it's like basically you know when you iPhones can do it now, like portrait mode, where you 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 shoot you take a picture of someone and the background's kind of blurry. Kind of blurry uh -huh. So basically, on a lens, um, when you have a large aperture and it's opened all the way, um, that's more the effect you can get. And then if you close down the lens, you let more or less light in, it gets more stuff in focus. Basically, got you. Um, so there's that aspect to lenses, and then it's just like each brand kind of has its own look to it in a way right, subtleties right. you know how contrasty how the colors pick up and stuff it's like kind of that. the same thing with like sound equipment like yeah if you get if you get mm, monitors exactly. right yeah. studio mm. monitors 
you know, the KRKs are going to be different than the, you right. know what I mean? Like, exactly. they're, they're all going to be different. They're going to exactly. all, they may be, have the same wattage, the, everything yeah. is the same, but the sound, the, yeah. the punches may be different, the warmth may be different. Right. So, okay, I get or, that. Or microphones, like microphone, mic preamp, you know, like the mic right. preamp is super important. People don't really think about that. They think, what kind of mic is that or something. Right. You know? So, it's kind of like that, too. So, do you, when you use the lenses, are because obviously cameras have, a lot of these modes in them. I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you'll buy a camera, you know, like you said, for, you know, pretty cheap, but if you want a decent camera, maybe to take pictures of your, you know, your kid's softball game or mm-hmm. your kid's soccer game or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. And they have all these things on there where you can have those modes, like yeah. you said, right? Do you use those in connection with the lenses? Like, so if you're going to shoot like a portrait shot, are mm-hmm. you using the portrait mode and using um, the portrait lens? No, no, I mean, I'm just yeah, wondering. No, 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 you know no, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So, well, for me, like at least on my cameras, it doesn't have like a portrait mode where it does that. Effect. Okay. But okay. I, iPhones have that. A lot of phones have that. So, um, so no, I don't do that. But the other part of cameras that that to me that plays a bigger role than the camera itself. I mean, I shouldn't say that you know the camera doesn't matter at all. But it's knowing how to manually set all your settings like white balance exposure mm. and stuff like that like for me that's what kind of took things to the next level and like being able to make things look real good how'd you, know? you figure that out y- youtube like okay. seriously i mean like that that goes back to the beginning of when i was first getting in cameras i spent hours every day research like i'm an mm. i'm addicted to information basically okay. you know yeah like whenever i get into something i just really get into it and i just i can't stop like learning well we heard the story of the uh what was it? The wood floors? Oh yeah. Basically. <laughs> That's funny. Like you, you only wanted to do. You started off wanting to do a section, and then yeah. you just did the whole crib. Or what, yeah. What, yeah. Ha- what happened with that? I mean, I, it's funny too because I was renting the house too, so the landlord must have loved me. But yeah, I just we, I had my studio room, and the carpet just you know started looking busted. I hate that shit. So I wanted to put down laminate wood. So I just I learned about it, and then I did it, and it, it was cool for like the studio because I had the treatment and everything mm-hmm. so um and then i ended up just doing like the living room and stuff the hallway yeah it's funny though because that's that's like house stuff i haven't i haven't done anything else with that since then that was my that was my only thing that was in, your in one. The, the one thing i did yeah but you <laughs> dove in and you learned about yeah. it and you did it you, well, know? So you just went on youtube and was like i'm gonna do this yeah i think i learned that from youtube it was like ikea flooring it's pretty cheap um, and I learned as I went because certain parts I fucked up and kind of had to redo. But you know how that is. That shit is not easy. Yeah, it's just not easy. Like getting the measurements right. And exactly, because right. when you cut it, you got to make it like fit just underneath the baseboard. And if you go a little too short, then you got like a gap at the end. Yeah, so, right. Like, yeah. Who yeah. the hell did your floor? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I did. <laughs> floor, uh, floors by floors by Jimmy over here. <laughs> Let's jump into uh, Just Give Me Five, which I, yeah, yeah, that sure. show, yeah. Fire. I absolutely Thank love you. that show. And we already talked to Dave Miranda, so yeah. I'll, we'll skip that part, because you guys could go watch or listen to that. For sure. Um, but let's talk about the the, sh- the shooting aspect of it, because mm-hmm. I find it, it's actually another part, it almost tells another story, in yeah. a sense, Yeah. because it's very... Um, documentary style yeah of shooting the yeah. way you shoot yeah uh i think it's beautifully done so i i guess first off you know because i know you guys go on location i know you, mm-hmm. you said you were shooting uh, mostly at your house or yeah but uh, you know some some stuff like when you guys went to you know santa monica yeah and you That's know cool. the uh, richie evans one where you guys yeah. were in downtown yeah um you know, do you scout locations and mm-hmm. do you go, okay, this will be a cool shot if we're here mm-hmm. or, you know, what's the process of that? It's, it's a bull. Sometimes we're just somewhere and I just, I'm like, okay, we need a spot to do this outro and I'm like looking around mm-hmm. and generally that's looking for good light. Um, but yeah, sometimes I location scout. So a lot of the time, like we started, like we did a lot at Heritage Square in downtown Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just generally know the layout there. Um, that Monarch Theater, that was cool because that's, you know, we just recently started doing indoor stuff in the last like 12 episodes or so. Mm-hmm. So that was when I really had to dial in like lighting and stuff. But when we're on location outdoors, like that was so fun because like we just, 
like sometimes we just show up somewhere. We get there before the guest, you know, mm-hmm. to make sure we have everything ready because we need a spot for his intro and outro. We need a spot for the guest, of course. Um, we used to like for the intro every time we'd we'd film like his hat scene, like putting on his hat and glasses and walking. Mm-hmm. Recently, I kind of did something that we've been reusing, but um, yeah, it's always a combination of like finding something that looks dope, but dealing with the lighting. Like so, that's when I like that's when I learned. I've learned a lot from that show, like filmmaking wise. Um, oh, dude, it's beautifully. I swear, dude. I'm not <laughs> saying that like, because you're here. It is yeah. actually beautifully done. I really Thanks, do. It's like it's inspiring because it yeah. almost makes me want to shoot like a documentary yeah it yeah. really does like i'm like that's cool that shot is so cool yeah that i got man like you know there's just the way things aren't always centered it's mm-hmm. you know it's off just but it's so visually pleasing to yeah me. yeah you know that's the way cool. it's done yeah i really like that i, I want to talk about too like the drone footage like yeah. you just said that you i think that's what you were referring to that you're mm-hmm. reusing that Oh yeah, yeah, the yeah. Beginning, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you like drone footage in, to begin? Like, do you, do you? Because I, sometimes I feel like it's overdone. Sometimes, yeah, like people sure. just use it because it's like fun to fly yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think the way you guys did yeah. it in the beginning of that of just give me five, yeah. we're showing like downtown Phoenix and just kind of coming up right above, you know, and it's not like super high up. Yeah, and it's just kind of flying around. It's just like simplistic. Like these cool, yes, Thank slow, you. slow, controlled mm-hmm. movements. Like I care about the composition. Like when I first got a drone, I would just fly it around nilly, willy nilly and do all this weird stuff. But I learned like it just goes back to how do I film with my actual camera? Like I look at something, I frame it up, and if I use a movement, the movement has to make sense. So if I'm using a drone, drones have movement. It, it has to make sense. So that's kind of how I go about that. But yeah, drones can definitely be like overused and stuff. Like I mean, like like going back to the weddings people always mention oh you you do drone stuff too so it's like in a way like a big selling point mm-hmm. even though even like in my weddings like i only use one or two shots that are drone shots but like they stand out to people <laughs> yeah they do it's people funny. people i mean they they are really cool because it's a fairly it's a new, new it's, a, it's a new thing it's, it's a new yeah. technology yeah. because beforehand it was you had to print out Oh, right yeah. to do Legit. it, which, yeah. yeah, which is thousands Legit. of dollars. Channel 3 yeah. shit. You know and even then, like it was yeah. shaky too. Oh man, you know? shaky. Oh, yeah. it was and and there, like you know? drones are so crazy. Fucking propeller going off you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nuts, dude. Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. But yeah, oh, the drones shit. are so they're smooth. They have yeah. like this just a cool motion to them. I just find it uh, a lot of times they're uh, overused in yeah. a sense, like. Yeah. I like it when documentaries use it in the sense, kind of like how you guys use it, you know? Uh, Show the location. Where it's like the location of it. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to give you a five second overview of right. the town that we're in, right. you know, so you know. Yeah. And it's not up really high. It's not carrying on too long right. and stuff like that. For sure. So, how many times did you crash it? <laughs> I've crashed once. I've almost crashed a bunch of times. Um, the one time I crashed... I, like I'm afraid to repeat it because I have an FAA license in order because you have to get a license in order to fly for money basically like or like put oh, drone really? shots yeah yeah I had no idea, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. I figured, I we were gonna get, get busted it. we just we had, no I'm just kidding right <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> like if I were to do real estate like uh, drone shots for someone and I didn't have a license they can find the realtor for like ten thousand dollars or some crazy oh. shit like really? it's, yeah it's pretty bizarre. Um, wow, that's interesting. So I, you, I had no I idea. Had I no guess idea. it makes sense. Well, you're in. But yeah, I guess. I honestly, mean, the test like had barely anything to do with flying a drone. Like I had to learn about airport runways, and you're never supposed to fly a drone at an airport. So it's like, why are they teaching me about the airport when I'm not supposed to be there? Like with my drone, but it, it, okay. a lot of. Yeah. But it, it like it took like three days of studying to to pass that test. But so you you can fly now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But oh yeah, going back to that crash though. So it was uh, Christmas Eve. My parents, they live out in Sun City. Okay. Um, every year, they the whole street, they put like those paper bag lantern things in the, mm-hmm. the streets. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, hey, that'd be cool if you'd get some drone shots of it. Um, I started around sunset and then I kept going when it was like dark out. Mm-hmm. But I also had like a couple drinks or something right like that. right or something enjoying like that. the holidays right yeah, yeah, right, of course. right um the nog was spiked for sure <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? and then yeah i was flying and i was doing some stupid things that i won't repeat the way i was flying it but then 
I like took off. I was like, ooh, got to get out of there. And then I was flying, thinking I'm good, but it was so dark I couldn't really see anything but the the paper bag lights. Like nothing was else was lit up. And basically, I, I crashed into a palm tree. And that palm tree, there was palm trees all along the street, but this was that one enormously tall one, while the rest of them mm. were little ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it hit that thing, and and that was it. Like it crashed into it, fell down. Um, I got it repaired for like three fifty or something like oh, that. Okay, not bad. Bucks, not too bad. But it sucked. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I was so pissed at myself. Uh, like I couldn't even face my family. Like I, I, I went in, I didn't say a word, no one knew what happened. And then later my mom was like, What happened? I was like, My drone crashed. <laughs> uh real quick, we'll get off the yeah. drone thing real quick. I, just, yeah. I was thinking about drone shots. Uh have you seen the ones where they fly into the like the fireworks and stuff? Oh, oh. Have you seen those? Where they're flying know. into fireworks? So fireworks I haven't off, seen that. And they're flying into that's a really cool use of a yeah. drone, uh, drone shot, by the way. Those are you're, like up in the air and they're like literally exploding. That's crazy. Uh, obviously not right on it. You know, they're so, you know, some sort of distance away, but it still you, looks like they're flying. You're a, real, you're a real pilot if you fly a drone <laughs> with fireworks. There's, there's a little, there's there's a little guy in there really like, <laughs> he really <laughs> drove it. Really you know, it was the coolest <laughs> use of a drone I've Some seen in a while. Yeah. It's, it's mostly, you know, like, you know, of, of a field or uh, right. a town or something. I'll crash it. I'll like crash it. <laughs> yeah, my dude. license would be revoked. Yeah, you, for sure. <laughs> First week. First week. <laughs> in jail. In yeah. man. Uh, in real estate, $10,000, man. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much of the, uh, the real estate and the, you know, shooting weddings has I mean obviously it's helped you right because it mm -hmm. got you to this point but how mm -hmm. much do you use some of the things that you see mm, that's while you're question. working yeah and use some of those tips and tricks yeah for the show or or even vice versa maybe yeah. there's something that you do for the show that you're like this was fire the next wedding I'm shooting yeah. I'm shooting that angle with this lighting and all that yeah I feel like it's done both ways just okay. like you said like so real estate photography the big thing with it, you're seeing lines. Like if you shoot a room, there's lines, there's the corner, there's the top. So you, you're used to straight lines, you're used to the lines being in a certain spot. So like today we we were filming Dave's outro and like I found a little spot, you know, it's this place next door, but the lighting was good because it was shade, which I always prefer shade if we're outdoors. Mm -hmm. But it had like these columns had this line I even pointed it out to him after we filmed I'm like look you're framed up between those columns and those lines are going to your eyes so people see your eyes he's like but he, he thought it was kind of cool but a lot of people are it's more it's, it's, it's a uh, subconscious thing like I don't think people see that and they're like oh look right. at that they just feel it well out. that's what you're there for yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah because people I think do notice in a sense yeah like uh they might not like think about it right like oh yeah, look at how it but it, it just does something it's a feeling to you. yeah, yeah. It's it a just feeling. definitely does and that so like th that's kind of what that's i wanted dope. to do with that show you know like what me and dave want to do like but that's me kind of bringing my my talent or whatever to the show and he has his talent and his gift mm -hmm. and we kind of we overlap in some ways but also we we're it, like oh, he's definitely more sociable than I am and stuff, so it balances out really well, you know, in right. that yeah. sense. So, um, so I, we kind of talked to him about it. Um, what do you guys have planned mm. um, for the future as far as different shows? Yeah. Um, document. I know we kind of talked about documentaries mm -hmm. or, or kind of getting into actual like film shooting. Mm -hmm. TV shows or movies like do you guys have anything that you're working on right now or not specifically I feel like like we're just like we we don't run out of people to, to interview right. um yeah you, you definitely a good problem to have. yeah mm -hmm. I mean I definitely want to evolve with it I think who knows I feel like it could bring us two different things like I mean it could bring us into the same thing where where like somebody wants us to do our show but interview like big name not just Arizona people but like only like you know established people mm -hmm. or it might someone might see him and be like we want him for this mm -hmm. or someone might see the production side of it and want me to do something so um, I don't know man it's just a big passion like I, I, I don't know no matter what comes out of it like I know that I, right now I'm, I'm making a living so I'm good like I don't feel pressured to, right. to make a living from it and like 
it's 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 a lot of fun and and no one else is doing it in the way we're doing it you know people that's true. that is you know tr- that so is true man very true so yeah I, I i feel like we're just gonna we're gonna keep doing it and who knows like wh- how it'll evolve or yeah. what it'll go into uh real quick man yeah. uh i'm you said you liked shooting in shade. Why is mm. why is that? Why do you like to shoot in, in the, shade outside? The sun is so damn bright, and um, and I mean, I learned just shooting aside. Like wedding photographers, they never shoot real. Generally, ne- they avoid shooting um, portraits of people with the sun hitting their face because of the way the shadow is. Like you're depending, like you're 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 subject to however the sun is at that moment. Um, so shade and also it comes, it comes down to like shades just easy because the, you can just, when you expose things, there's nothing that's too bright or too dark. If you, if everything's the same amount of brightness versus if you're out in the sun and say you're filming somebody under a tree and they're in the shade, but then the whole background is sun, the whole background is going to look like shit. Like no matter how dope it looks. So with shade, because cameras see differently from we do. Like no matter how good they get, right. they that still, so they still the 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 brightness, the 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 bright spots and the shadows, like those are very noticeable when you're filming. Versus like our eyes, like we can see in the shadows things that are really bright. They don't look all screwed up like they do on on cameras. Yeah. So so shade just kind of makes. Is it there a particular way. time of day that's better to shoot? In? Um, like with shade, you can almost shoot any time, but I like to do. Um, sunrise sunset because you know like that just looks good um and in those situations i like it when the the sun hits the back of them and they're backlit it makes like a halo effect mm-hmm. around them that's probably more in the in the wedding stuff because it kind of looks beautiful yeah, it goes I with the whole wedding thing yeah. Definitely. but for the simplicity that. of the show like shade is always easiest i feel like you know do you have a kind of a two-part question yeah do you have a favorite guest hmm that done. that you've done. I know uh, um, Miranda said um, uh, Santa Maria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have a favorite guest? And maybe it's the same show. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite show that you shot? Yeah. Separate, just because of how it came out visually. Yeah. It's and it might be the same, but yeah. I, uh, it's hard to point out a specific favorite. But like I was looking at older episodes. Um, the other day and it was kind of cool because like I'm I'm excited about how much I progressed but even look, looking back at the old ones I take stuff from like wow I like the way I did that like that was actually real cool mm-hmm. um, but like I think favorite guest and honestly so my, I have a five year old son and uh, we had Element the human beatbox on mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and my son loves to like imitate that so I, I that's think that's dope. like my favorite episode because of that. And it's like entertaining because he, he tells a story and then he beatboxes throughout it too, like examples of how he did things. That's crazy. So he was super entertaining. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of dope guests, like a lot, a lot of good stories and stuff. And that's Great how we, stories. that's how we try to, or I, he, he writes the questions, but like you try to keep them, you try to ask things in a way to where they don't just give a, a straight answer they can go they can tell a story about right. how things came about right because that goes into the whole documentary docuseries yeah, thing, yeah. you know no, for sure. it, a favorite show is there a favorite one that you film like visually um or even a couple man. that you can point to um i definitely did like that element one visually too okay um i, I can't really think of specific other ones that were like you never, a, you never walked away from one, but like, yo, this this is about to be crazy. Well, honestly, this. like, I'm so, I'm like my own biggest critic and stuff when I'm Got making you. stuff. So whenever I make something, it's like it's cool and 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 I'm ready to go to the next thing. Yeah. But when I come back later, that's when I'm like, damn, that, that was, was really crazy. good. That's how I was with music too. I work on a beat for a day if I had to, and like really put work into it and like. Be like, okay, I guess I'm I'm done. It's all right. But then, <laughs> but then go back and be like, oh shit, this was fired. Yeah. Sometimes I have one. What's I have that? one that, that's one of my favorites that's been shot by yeah. yours. And um, I watched it. Sorry, terrible with names of uh, uh, it was the one one of them in Santa Monica where you guys were in an apartment. Yeah. Um, where he was sitting um, down and but there was the, um, act, well, the actor. Uh, uh, <laughs> Until, uh, the only reason I forgot is because because you you forgot his name. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. But 
But let me, you guys, you think about it while I tell you the, yeah. why I love this this episode. And, and visually speaking. Yeah. Um, visually speaking, it's because it's... Sorry, it had, Johnny Ray Diaz. Thank Johnny, you. I was going to say Diaz, but I was like, I, I was going to say... I had the last name. Yeah. I was yeah. trying to think of the... Yeah. Okay. I was thinking of Joey Diaz, but that's a comedian. And I was like, that's uh, yeah. not... That's not okay. And that's yeah. why I kept tripping me up. I'm yeah. Like, Joey Diaz? No. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. The simplicity of 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 that shot, but also the the beauty of that shot, because man, yeah, ever since we place. started this this, this show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had many conversations, and we don't do editing mm -hmm. as you know as much as like you do with shots mm -hmm. and stuff. But we still have to look at okay, this this wasn't right here. He was leaning back. It was you know yeah, stuff like that. You look at it right for sure. But visually speaking there was the apartment but the apartment had like lines in it yeah. for me yeah right but then there was like this grass on the side i don't know yeah. what it was could have been a plant Bushes but it was stuff. like kind of it was just breezy yeah. enough yeah where it wasn't affecting the microphone so it right. wasn't getting you know right um yeah, it was too there was shot. something about that that <laughs> was just like <laughs> so visually pleasing That's to cool. me yeah. because it was kind of fuzzy like you said like you know how um, the, you know however what that shot's called <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know where it's kind of uh and he's like focused he's in the shot mm -hmm. i don't know man it just it <laughs> visually pleased me to yeah. see That's so that cool. particular episode was yeah. one of my favorites as just visually yeah, wise. Yeah, yeah. like i really yeah. really liked the that's way that awesome. one came out that's cool yeah and, and we just showed up at his apartment and we were going to film inside at first and and i couldn't really find a spot that that felt visually pleasing mm -hmm. and then i remembered outside there it was shade in that specific spot with the, where the sun was mm -hmm. and i just yeah i just kind of saw again from doing real estate photography and seeing lines and uh symmetry and stuff like that that's that's like just how it came together you know uh Real quick, do you <laughs> would you watch any kind of film, TV, or whatever? Do you do you cr uh, criticize the the editing or the the filming process of it? I I know. I, 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 yeah. Has it changed your, your yeah. viewing experience? For now? sure, yeah. for sure. But I, I'm I'm I just try to learn a lot. I, like I absorb like a sponge. Um, that that's like i and the, the funny thing about filming and all this actually is when i was growing up like talented in these different areas like i was into skateboarding and you know getting into music just talented these things i was never visually like i was never talented like in a visual sense i can't draw like for shit mm -hmm. um so and i was never into movies at all like people would say lines from movies i looked like i don't know anything because i didn't know what they were talking about and then, but once I got into filming and stuff, like I've gone back and now I actually watch movies more than I did, you know, um, and I learn from them. So like, I just, I just love seeing like, I, I do pick it apart in my brain, but I still try to enjoy the movie. Yeah, too, yeah, you know? yeah. I, I get it, you know, yeah. but there's just some stuff that is so jarring to yeah. me. And and it'll be you, you, blockbuster never, movies. Never, so, oh, never, never saw it before that. Never. Yeah. I never paid like, attention. Never Yo, crossed why my. Why do they do that? I'm son? like, like, why? That's Yo, why they pan this? the camera that way, son? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> moving on that was terrible, son. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's That's weird. It's yeah. weird That's how like that like yeah. just. I watch like, interviews different now because yeah. of this. Yeah. 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 I watch sure. interviews different now because of doing you know doing the interviews. Yeah. I'll watch them and be like, yo, the question, like, why? Like, I just different things. Like, mm -hmm. the body language was weird. Or, mm -hmm. like, they never even looked at the person. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, and I'll pick that apart. Or I'll watch them. I'll be like, yo, that was fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the way they asked that question. I love yeah. the way they brought that, you know what I mean, to the table. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, yeah. definitely different. Yeah, I, I really like uh, Wes Anderson's style of filming his yes movies, like. yeah, yeah, yeah Wes Anderson because you like lines right yeah that's he part is, of it yeah he is so he always gets that dead center symmetrical <laughs> yes shot. he does yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. but I usually that doesn't work in yeah. my brain like no. that dead center right. but it's what's going on behind yeah that, that it works because right. he'll have like weird symmetry yeah and you're like 
whoa, that is yeah. like a cool shot, man. Yeah. So I know exactly. And what and, about. and he has like I like, and this kind of goes into my style of filming. Like I use newer stuff. It's digital. Um, but I like the look of film too. So I like the combination of really clean, clear, sharp, but the film aspect of like movie green, cinema, green, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's and so he 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 that. has that style in his movies mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> long pause. No, I, I had a question. I yeah. did like totally. I just got lost in talking about yeah, the no, technical right? stuff. <laughs> I was, I'm literally like, my brain's like going through a book right now. Like, That's where funny. We went through the that? Rolodex, you know? Um, I'll, I'll just DM you the question, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'll that post works. We'll, well, yeah, we'll get it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let, them know, uh, let them know where they can find you. Yeah. Um, so on Instagram... Well, I'm like three different people. So I have my personal page, which goes more with the Just Give Me Five stuff, uh, at Jimmy N Beats. Um, that's on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then um, my wedding stuff is at J Nelson Films. And then my real estate stuff is at JN Media 365. And then nice. you said you had a website. Do you, is that where people go if they want to, like, they're watching this, they wanted to yeah. hire you for? Possibly, Anything? yeah, yeah, yeah. So jnelsonfilms.com Nelson, Jay okay. or jnmedia.net. Yeah, whatever, okay. whatever right. it lines up with. Well, dude, <laughs> I'm excited because I'm serious, man. I like the way you film. Thank I you. like your eye. I like uh, your guys' vision, what you guys got going on uh, yeah. for Just Give Me Five. But just for you in particular, I'm excited what you're going to work on because I really do like your visual style. That's awesome, That's man. That's really good. and. You and Dave Miranda have something super yeah, special. Yeah, y'all got to keep it going. I'm a tad bit jealous yeah. of what you guys got, to be quite honest <laughs> with you, you know, because it's just so good. Yeah, you know, it's so good. And uh, Appreciate so that, man. Anybody who has not watched Just Give Me Five, just go find somebody that you may have heard of or whatever and just watch it because I think it's just a fire. Yeah. Fire show. Yeah, and sure. Everybody should be watching Yeah, well, and we'll have the link down below. Yeah, uh, for you guys to go check out the channel we'll have the links to uh, Jimmy's uh, social media and, and you know all the website and all that good cool. stuff so I'll get with you afterwards and send me all the links and cool. we'll get that popping thanks again absolutely yes, thank man you so thank much you guys for, for taking Pop that me, travel <laughs> Uh, well, stop by Knott's uh, Berry Farm on your way out. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, That's Disney right World is right. Disneyland's right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, we appreciate it, Jimmy man. Yeah, appreciate yeah, you, bro. Absolutely, yeah, thank, thank you, you guys. Uh, you guys stay safe. You guys stay positive. And as always, this is the Gray Space. Peace. Peace. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit this button right here to check out the most recommended video for you. And click right here to get our latest upload. And as always, subscribe. Peace. Peace.